Well, hello, my friend. All the very, very best to you. I hope you're having a good day. I hope you're finding some happiness this week. If you need prayer, please feel free to post your prayer requests right there on the page. We're going to make it a point to pray over these prayer needs. I'd love to pray for you. And if you can stick around for a few minutes, I'm guessing eight minutes, we'll be discussing how Jesus spread happiness through encouragement, and you can do the same. Now, if you have your Bibles, open them up. Gospel of Matthew, chapter 16 and verse 13. When Jesus came to the region of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, Who do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? So they said, Well, some say John the Baptist. Some say Elijah. Others say Jeremiah or one of the prophets. And he said to them, But who do you say that I am? And Simon Peter answered, and he said, You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. Again, Matthew 16, verses 13 through 16. Caesarea Philippi sat squarely on the boundary between Israel and the Gentile world. It attracted caravans and pilgrims from such far off uh, lands as Ethiopia, as far north as, north as modern day Turkey. As much as any city in ancient Palestine, this was a melting pot of people. Religion to, was to Caesarea Philippi what, what, what produce is to a street market. Every type of deity was worshiped there. It was in this maelstrom of religions and cultures that Jesus asked his followers this profoundly important question. Who do you say that I am? Who do you say that I am? Now, I hear silence from the disciples. I hear a throat being cleared. I hear a sigh or two or ten. I see eyes lowered and shoulders slump and heads duck. Finally, it fell to Peter to speak up. We imagine a long, lingering pause after which he said the most audacious words he and perhaps anyone had ever spoken. He looked at the penniless rabbi from Galilee and he said, you're the Christ, the son of the living God. Now, Christ, by definition, means the appointed or chosen one. And Jesus heard this and all but jumped for joy at the confession of Peter. He said, blessed are you, Simon Barjona. That's in verse 17. In other words, way to go, Peter. You're the man. Give me five. You nailed it. I mean, this was huge encouragement. Jesus gave Peter the equivalent of a standing ovation, maybe even a chest bump. It's as if he threw both arms around the burly fisherman and just squeezed any lingering hesitation out of him. He even changed the apostle's name. Simon would now be called Peter. Rocky. A name that is kin to Petros. Simon, the man who expressed a rock-solid faith, needed a rock-solid name. So Jesus gave it to him. Now I ask you, how do you suppose, suppose this burst of affirmation made Peter feel? When his friends began calling him Rocky, when Jesus put an arm around his shoulders and said, just love you, Rocky. When Peter dozed off to sleep at night, thinking of his new name, what Jesus had said to him and about him. Do you suppose he felt encouraged? Of course he did. Of course he did. Jesus did to Peter what encouragers do. He summoned the best out of the man. He built Peter up with the skill of a, of a rock mason. He encouraged and stacked affirmation and inspiration. You know encouragement pays high dividends. Healthy homes enjoy a positive to negative ratio of five to one. In other words, for every negative comment or criticism, there are five acts or words of encouragement. Similar results have been found among business teams. High performance teams experience a positive to negative ratio of nearly six to one, 
six positive comments for every negative one. Low performing teams, conversely, have an average of three negative comments for every positive one. The fact of the matter is, folks, we thrive. We thrive when there is encouragement. Why? Because there's a discouragement conspiracy afoot. Companies are spending billions of dollars to convince us that we are deficient and inadequate. Think about it. To sell face cream, they tell us that our faces are wrinkled. To sell new clothing, they have to convince us that our clothing is out of fashion. To sell hair color, they must persuade us that our hair is dingy. Marketing companies deploy the brightest minds and the deepest pockets of our generation to convince us that we are chubby, smelly, ugly, out of date. Folks, we're under attack. Inadequacy indwells a billion hearts. Who's going to tell people the truth? Will you? Will you dis distribute encouragement to the world? Will you make some happiness happen? Will you call the forgotten kid from the back of the pack to the front? Will you remind humanity that we are made in God's image? That we are chosen, that we are destined, that we are loved, that God is for us, He's not against us, that we're in God's hand, in God's plan, in God's hands. Will you go face to face with this tidal wave of inadequacy that sucks people out to sea? Let's follow the example of Jesus. Let's follow, follow His lead. Let's encourage one another. Call somebody special. Call somebody rocky. Call forth the Peter from within a Simon. Give the gift that God loves to give, and that is the gift of encouragement. And can I give it to you? God's for you, my friend. He is. He's with you. He loves you. And there's nothing He loves more than to hear your voice. All the very best.